your go-to curry? That's what I want to know. You know, a traditional style from India, from Bangladesh, from Malaysia or Singapore or Thailand, from popping pineapple on top of gravied meat in the 60s in Australia and calling it a curry to today's extraordinary landscape of culturally diverse curries. We're pretty lucky in Australia, I reckon. To find out how far and what is in a great curry, let's first go to one of our gurus, Jackie M., a Malaysian and Singaporean street food specialist, restaurateur, TV presenter. She's pioneer of live cooking videos, amongst other things. Jackie M., what a pleasure to speak with you. And thank you for being with us on ABC Radio across Australia. Oh, great to talk to you, Adam. I mean, when I say an Asian curry, it doesn't do justice to the sheer diversity across many countries in Asia, ne never mind the regions within those countries. How would you define a go-to curry that you know is a cracker every time? Oh, you know, with, I think nowadays with Australians, they're very familiar with uh, beef rendang, which is, I, I know, look, once I mention beef rendang, I'm going to get a lot of angry Indonesians who claim that was their dish, right? But um, Malaysia has such a big like variety of curries, but generally I would categorize them into three, uh, I guess, three standout dishes. So there's the beef rendang, there's a Malaysian chicken curry, which I, I actually only just found out, though don't quote me on that, but someone <laughs> told me that Malaysian chicken curry is the only curry in the world that's actually made with potatoes. Really? Um, yeah, so I, I always thought that was like pretty normal, but mm -hmm. you know that's one distinctive feature of Malaysian chicken, uh, Malaysian chicken curry. Um, and also there's the Malaysian fish curry, generally like uh, as in like fish head curry. Um, so those are the three broad categories that I would kind of like uh, think of when I think of Malaysian curries. But of course, there are lots and lots of others in between as well. And we've already heard a bit from listeners about, well, the home from the ground up made curries they make with every individual spice and other component. Are there a few must have ingredients if you're building your own curry sauce to then use with whatever meat or vegetable? You know what, it's interesting you should say that because I find that with a lot of Australian chefs, when they attempt Malaysian curries or when they, say, for instance, submit a recipe on, on like, Australian media or whatever, they like to kind of, like, drill right down to grinding their own spices, roasting their own spices and pulling them all together. And a lot of Malaysians um, look at that and think, hang on, that's not how we generally make rendang or chicken curry at home. We, you know, we're very, very big on convenience as in using prepared curry mixes. I, I think the previous caller was talking about like the goat curry mix. In Malaysia, now, um, generally, if you have a look around in Australia at your, you know, certainly with Asian supermarkets, you know, maybe nowadays more so as well in your regular Australian supermarket, look for Malaysia, made in Malaysia, and I know I sound really like, you know, <laughs> nationalistic, yeah, but it's going to make a whole world of difference. And usually with made in Malaysia curry powders, a past, um, you know, you'll find them labeled as meat curry powder or fish curry uh -huh. powder, sometimes rendang spice mix, rendang curry mix, that sort of stuff. So depending on what you want to make, make go for those but yeah essentially if you if you taste some great malaysian curry and it's funny you should mention because when i had my restaurant my daughter grow, grew up like you know around like my, my restaurant food so she never had to think about learning how to cook herself and now that she's lived away from home now and it's married and all that she actually finally after 26 plus years i decided to attempt my chicken curry for the first time <laughs> ever and then she came back to me and goes, it tastes totally different. You know, what's wrong? What did I do wrong? And, uh, of course, it turned out to be the curry spice mix that she was using. Uh -huh. So it does make a difference. If you want to attempt Malaysian curries, go look for Made in Malaysia. Would uh, you say that's it. true to say of a lot of other Asian countries where they have a specific proportional mix of, of the spices and, and the other elements that make it just so? Yeah, 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 very much so. And, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, and I also tell people, don't stress out too much as well. When you do go shopping for Malaysian curry powders, if it's, you know, if you can only find fish curry powder, but you've got meat at home, you can actually mix and match. You know, they'll, t they'll still taste fantastic, but they do have that Malaysian vibe about them. Mm. And I know, like, at least with Malaysian curry powders, they tend to be a lot milder as well um, compared to ones from, say, um, you know, the one that my daughter bought was, I think, was from Bangladesh or something uh -huh. like that. Yeah, right? and places so, like Thailand are renowned for having a bit of a kick uh, as far as yeah, that, that, spice, like that. that spice in the middle and the end of the taste. Very much so, yeah, mm. yeah. And that's the other thing as well, because in Australia I find like trying to, you know, educate Australians on 
curries from our part of the world in Southeast Asia. They tend to confuse Malaysian curries with Thai curries as well. But in broad strokes, and obviously, you know, they're going to be like exceptions and all that. In broad strokes, Thai curries tend to be sweeter. Um, yep. And they use a lot of fresh ingredients like coriander roots and all that sort of stuff, which we don't generally use. Um, but Malaysian curries, we do put a little bit of sugar. I know some chefs are a little bit alarmed <laughs> at that, but we do put a little bit of sugar, but not quite as much as the Thais do. And we use uh, generally we use coconut milk as the you know as the, the the base, as opposed to yogurt that you'll find a lot in um, North Indian curries, which really surprised me when I first came to Australia back in the eighties as well. Growing up in the small town of Seremban and then moving to Australia, you're in a good position to sort of see how far in recent times Australia has come in authentic Southeast Asian and Asian curries. How nuanced have we become here, do you think? Um, you know what? I think uh, I, I really noticed the shift. I think I, I actually kind of wrote the, the tide because I came to Australia in the like mid 80s along with a lot of like refugee intake from Southeast Asia, from um, Vietnam and that sort of stuff. Um, and I've noticed that the Australian palate has really kind of like expanded along with that as well, which is fantastic. And the other thing about the Vietnamese community is that they use essentially the very similar ingredients to what we use in Malaysian cooking as well. So that's helped a lot to kind of educate Australians. So it's an ongoing process. Like when I was running pop-up stalls, you know, at weekend markets for the longest time, people would confuse my beef rendang for Rogan Josh. Huh. You know, they'll, they'll ask for Rogan Josh or they'll ask like, oh, you know, your, your, your chicken curry, is that a green curry or is that a, a, a yellow curry? And I'd be like, you know, kind of like, well, in Malaysia, we don't really color code our curries. You know, <laughs> they're just different shades of brown, you know. Um, but yeah, but we, we're getting along. It's, you know, Australia has really like, you know, advanced like in leaps and bounds in terms of their knowledge of like Southeast Asia. Malaysia, I think we're still playing catch up to the Thais, <laughs> but we're getting there. <laughs> Jackie M is with us on ABC Radio across Australia, Malaysian and Singaporean street food specialist. She's been a restaurateur, a TV presenter, and obviously knows the very detailed ins and outs of the Malay region curries and other parts of Asia as well. We're going to get the Indian region perspective soon. As more suggestions and go-to curries come in, Jackie M, when you are wanting to really demonstrate what is a quintessential Malaysian curry, what will you cook for people? I think I definitely would go with, with the uh, Malaysian chicken curry. And a lot of people, because sometimes I, 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 like, I cook for family or for friends, for church uh, members and that sort of stuff. They'll try it and they'll just be really blown away. Because I think, like I said, Malaysia, Malaysian food is still playing catch up a little bit. Like, you know, most Australians would know curries, right? But Malaysian chicken curry? Like, even though to me, it's something I grew up eating. It's nothing particularly, like, mind-blowingly, like, distinct about it. But to Australians, they, they tend to love it, right? Mm. And it's very, very easy to pull together. It's just a couple of ingredients, curry powder, onion, garlic, um, you know, lemongrass if you've got it, but not essential. And voila, you can prepare it like, you know, in 30 minutes at home. Jackie M, a joy to get just a snapshot of your knowledge and, and your expertise in this area. Uh, curries seem to be ubiquitous and yet so detailed and different in, in this country now. Thank you very much for being with us. You're so welcome. Great to talk to you, Adam.